Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Los Angeles, and thank you especially to my patrons on Patreon, Aziz, Bradley, Brian, Bridget, David, Ken, Robert, and Spencer, whose support makes this channel possible. Now, for those of you who follow, who've been following my Patreon blog, um, you might have seen, seen that I um, recently uploaded this um, revised 2020 Next Measure M map. And now, this is, um, so... In the previous episode of how to rebuild the Pacific Electric, um, we looked at the lines of the historic Pacific Electric that could be rebuilt in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. And this week, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the lines of the Pacific Electric north of Slauson Junction that can actually be revived by this next Measure M coming up in 2020 um, if we get them onto the ballot. So like we did last time, I'm going to kind of go through um, this tangle of colorful rail lines here one by one and um, explain each the justification for each one, why I think each one would make sense to be included in this forthcoming ballot measure in 2020. and. Um, the reason I started with uh, South LA and Orange County is just because, as you can see, the um, what was lost, the lines of the Pacific Electric that were actually lost to us in, um, in downtown Los Angeles and the west side, as well as the San Gabriel Valley, is um, was was truly staggering. Um, so much was lost to us, and. Um, a lot of uh, some parts of these rights of ways are actually still intact, and um, of uh, the historic Pacific Electric right of ways. And I have actually traced all of the old right of ways that are still intact and um, have not been developed on yet. And um, I've incorporated these into um, this map that I've developed. And this map is essentially the um, all of the lines of the Pacific Electric in downtown Los Angeles, the San Gabriel Valley, all the way out to Chino, Covina, and um, as far uh, this map shows as far west as about the 405. But um, I do have some ideas for the far west side. We'll get into in maybe part three. Uh, well, part three, I'll look at the Inland Empire because this is going to be a ballot measure that includes all four um, counties in the greater Los Angeles region. Um, part of San Bernardino County, as well as uh, most of Los Angeles County and all of Riverside and Orange Counties. But today we're going to look at downtown Los Angeles, central Los Angeles, and we're also going to look at uh, a little bit in, in the San, San Fernando Valley. We're also going to look at the old reviving the old Pacific Electric Lines in the San Gabriel Valley, where I have heard from a lot of people that there is a desperate need for more rail service. And I, you have been heard, and I have figured out the best way to rebuild the rail lines through the San Gabriel Valley here. So, well, first, we're just going to go to where we are right now in history. So we are right now in the year 2018. So here we are in 2018. That's that's Los Angeles Metro in 2018. The main substance of what we are going to talk about in this episode is the same thing that we talked about in the previous episode. We're going to talk about how we went from this to this, and then how we're going to go from this to this. A lot of the lines you see on that on that map are actually funded already. So I'm going to start by showing what's already funded here and what is already under construction as as part of Measure M. So as part of Measure M, we have got our regional connector project. And that is going to bring the gold and blue lines through downtown Los Angeles right here. And that way you'll be able to take the blue line all the way from Long Beach to the Civic Center in downtown LA or all the way from the East LA Civic Center to the beach in Santa Monica. And this is also going to be extended all the way down as far as right here is uh, the extension to as far as this point of the gold line has been funded already. And um, this is what I view as the rational extension of that. Of course, um, this is the Whittier Greenway. So if there was resistance to um, relocating the bike lanes to an adjacent street where they could be uh, grade separated, 
or something like that. Um, this could be, this could also continue down Whittier Boulevard, and that would be, that's another old Pacific Electric route. It could just as easily be used. It would just cost a little bit more. So in addition to the uh, already funded um, regional connector, we of course have our Crenshaw LAX line, which is going to, that's going to be the next metro rail line to open. And um, up to, so this, this part isn't um, under construction yet, but this part all the way up to the Expo line. And now uh, just for, the ref for your reference, I show the Expo line as gold here because the Expo line is going to actually become part of the gold line and the, the northern part of the gold line is going to become part the northern part of the blue line. So you can see there's going to be one continuous line uh, eventually all the way to um, the San Bernardino Metrolink line um, from Long Beach and then uh, the gold line will eventually run from these cities to Santa Monica Beach. Just to clarify uh, precisely why the Expo line is not blue anymore on this map. Now, um, there's going to be a lot of colors, um, so uh, don't don't focus too much on colors and focus more on where the routes are actually going and what routes I'm, I'm, I'm interested in using. So in the next year or two, our Crenshaw LAX line to uh, at least as far north as the Expo is going to open. Uh, and that's this right here. Um, and that is eventually going to be extended north to West Hollywood. Now, I believe that the most uh, probable routing that Metro is going to choose for this for this uh, railroad is going to follow the historic Pacific Electric route uh, up San Vicente and then down the Pacific Electric route um, along Santa Monica Boulevard. And then it will go have to go underground here because the Pacific Electric routes um, in this part of central Hollywood have just been completely obliterated. But um, as you can see here, uh, this portion of the historic Pacific Electric route um, down Santa Monica Boulevard is intact as is the uh, median running stretch on San Vicente here. So this would just be, this would just be similar to um, the uh, blue line on Long Beach Boulevard or the Expo line on Colorado Avenue. Um, and then it would go underground in time for this portion of the right of way, which has been obliterated in, in Hollywood. So uh, it would go underground and meet with the red line at Hollywood Highland Station. So I think what we should do with this line is we should get it up to the Hollywood Bowl because Hollywood Bowl is a major source of traffic congestion. And now in politics, there's also often um, the uh, other side of it. I mean, politicians often love stadiums, but other politicians will sometimes be like, we don't want to spend any public money on access to private you know, event centers like this. And I totally understand that. I think in a lot of cases it is justified, but the the issue is something like the Hollywood Bowl here, where it's like, well, I guess the argument against extending the Crenshaw line up here would be that like, well, the Hollywood Bowl is a private venue. Um, why why make the, the rich people who own it even richer with public money? And that's fair. Maybe we could squeeze some money out of them um, in conjunction with like naming rights for the station or something. But, um, the issue is that these venues are people go to them regardless of whether or not they're public venues or private venues and that means there's a lot of traffic generated by them and that's that's one of the reasons a lot of people have suggested that dodger stadium should actually be moved closer to downtown i'll, I'll get into this a lot more in future episodes because this is a story that is very complex like all of our city's stories and well worthy of being heard but that I'm just gonna briefly skim over here, but essentially Dodger Stadium was supposed to be an affordable housing project back in the 40s, and um, then the whole Red Scare thing happened with you know the Cold War and all that, and what what ultimately ended up happening was that this thing was built on top of uh, where the affordable housing was supposed to be built, Dodger Stadium. That land was sold to private business for next to nothing, um, where there was supposed to have been a, a housing development. And not to mention, there was supposed to be an affordable housing thing. There was actually already a neighborhood here called Chavez Ravine. And that neighborhood was completely obliterated, um, supposedly to build affordable housing back in the 1940s. But then Chavez Ravine was destroyed, so Dodger Stadium could be built. And um, Dodger Stadium's kind of out of the way. So some people think that it would be good to actually move Dodger Stadium closer to downtown um, or put it next to an existing rail line, because that would, might actually be cheaper than building rail to Dodger Stadium. So that, that is something I also thought about in addition to the Hollywood Bowl, just on this little aside. But um, yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit of Dodger Stadium history right there. and. Um, 
the reason I don't have a rail line going to Dodger Stadium is I think it should probably just be moved, um, and I think that land should probably just be turned back into a park, because that's just, that's too much parking lot. Look at all that parking lot. Like, if we put Dodger Stadium, if we moved it and we put it next to a rail line, we could put trees here and stuff. Like, there's probably not enough water in California for a water park, but we could have a nice regular park. We could expand Griffith Park and, you know, make it more accessible. Like, it's just such a, it's such a tragedy that all of this open land is used for parking. So we should move Dodger Stadium and not build a rail line to it. We should just we should just move Dodger Stadium. But with respect to the Hollywood Bowl, there is nowhere really to move this, and it is a huge source of traffic congestion in Hollywood. So I say we extend the Crenshaw LAX line north to the Hollywood Bowl, like so, and um, it just makes sense to do this because it will get cars off of the road, and that's that's one of the objectives here. Um, all right, so that's my justification for that extension right there. Now, if you continue, you can also see um, in the previous video we talked about this Bria LAX line. I now envision this as a Bria LAX UC Riverside line, but we're going to get into that in part three, where we're actually going to look at the possible extension of Metro Rail to the Inland Empire. But that's the next. That's going to be in part three. And um, the reason that's not going to be in this video is because um, there's cool stuff going on over here. Uh, in San Bernardino County, they're currently working on um, this Aero DMU service. And so if San Bernardino wants to have their own train, they want to have local control, I say let them do it. We're not going to push Metro Rail in too far into San Bernardino County because they got their own thing going on, and I respect that. Um, but we're going to talk about that more in the next video. And this video, we're, um, so this is the Bria LAX line, which I now envision going all the way to UC Riverside. And, of course, we have... All right, so in the last video, we talked about this seafoam kind of tealish line here. Now, this, this goes down to uh, East Long Beach. But now, as you can see here, I have this passing through Union Station along the same route as the West Santa Ana branch, which will eventually run um, through downtown L.A. Um, and then turn out on Slauson Junction and head towards Orange County. And we talked about uh, that, or I talked about that in my recent video where I urge people to call the Orange County Supervisors and uh, get them to help fund that. But uh, so this seafoam line, um, this could be, this doesn't necessarily have to connect to my uh, seafoam East Long Beach line, but what I have here, so this is the Alhambra subdivision here. And um, this is an old Southern Pacific route. Uh, and a lot of these towns grew up along this rail line. Uh, the reason I use this instead of, um, oh no, uh, this, I, I use this in addition to conversion of the Silver Line to rail. I think the uh, El Monte busway portion of the Silver Line should be converted to rail. And the reason for this is because the 10 freeway actually ate an old Pacific Electric rail line. And um, you'll see that this is kind of a trend that repeats itself through our region's history, because um, this is something that also happened down to the rail line that used to go to Disney. And this Disney was built on the Anaheim Southern Pacific Station, but it was obliterated to build the 5 freeway. Well, guess what? The Pacific Electric Line, this one you see right here, this main Pacific Electric Line to Covina and San Dimas, this was completely, almost completely obliterated to build the 10 freeway, this monstrosity right here. So this also ate a Pacific Electric Rail Line, and that's actually why they had to build the El Monte Busway in the median of it, because it was eating a, a rail line. and. Similarly to with the Green Line, where they had to build the Green Line in the median because this stretch of the um, old uh, West Santa Ana Pacific Electric Ranch was eaten by the 105 freeway. Similarly to how they had to build the, the Green Line in the 105 because of that. Before that, uh, many years before that, back in the 70s, they had also had to build the Silver Line Busway, which is uh, not shown immediately on Apple Maps, but you can get it to show up. Yeah, and there's, there that is. So that's that's the El Monte, that's the Silver Line bus service right now. So that, we've got to convert this to rail. But not only convert it to rail, we've got to extend it, because the old Pacific Electric Line actually went a lot further than just El Monte here. It continued all the way on, as you can see, pretty much to San Bernardino County. So the El Monte busway is not enough. It's not a full replacement of that old Pacific Electric Rail Line that was obliterated by the construction of the 10 freeway. And the San Bernardino Metrolink line is awesome. I love it, I ride it all the time. But uh, the stops are not frequent enough and uh, there needs to be a higher frequency uh, service because this is a very densely populated area here. So what we've got to do is we've got to convert the Silver Line to rail. And then right here in El Monte, what you can see is the historic Pacific Electric route. Um, some of it has indeed been developed on. I'll just clear this here. 
but not enough to preclude the return of rail similar to the Expo line. So if we built a rail line similar to the Expo line down Ramona Boulevard, you can see this This is the old Pacific Electric tracks were actually probably where these houses were, um, I believe, uh, between Iris Lane and Ramona Boulevard, where this parking lot is. But um, we don't need Ramona Boulevard to be this wide. I mean, there's no reason for Ramona Boulevard to be, have have to, to be this wide when there's another street right up here. So we could we could easily just make Ramona Lane, Ramona Boulevard a normal four lane street, maybe remove some of the parking. I say just continue it along the historic Pacific Electric route that you can see here. As far as, I believe we extend the Silver Line as far east as San Bernardino and just have it pick up the existing line that's already being built. And um, we're going to talk about extending the blue line to San Bernardino in part three, but I want to just talk about um, this, uh, the uh, central LA, the San Gabriel Valley, and the San Fernando Valley, as well as the west side, because the, ex the, the, the number of Pacific Electric lines that were lost in those areas is the greatest number of any areas. So um, I want to just get through everything that was lost there and talk about how best we can replace it um, before we get into the Inland Empire. But I have not forgotten about the Inland Empire. That's going to be a big part of this measure. And um, just once I get this area figured out, um, I will get to that. And I would love any, any feedback um, that you would like to provide to me on patreon.com slash Los Angeles. Um, I rely on the support of my wonderful Patreons to do videos like this as often as I do. And... Um, it, uh, so if you have any ideas and you want to fix up the rail where you live, um, I'd love to hear your ideas. Um, I'm fixing up the rail where I live right now in the greater Los Angeles area. So all the help I can get, I always appreciate. Okay, so we've revived the um, Pacific Electric Line um, past Covina to San Dimas and all the way to the Inland Empire as uh, an extension of the Silver Line. But we have converted the Silver Line to rail. It is now a rail line. In addition, so we haven't gotten rid of the, the Metrolink line either. That's still there and that has its own separate route. But Metrolink will also be electrified and that will be running every at least every 30 minutes and it will be electrified and hopefully it will accept tap cards, but um, we'll get to that later. That's good. that's a whole other thing. All right, so anyways, yeah, so this Seafoam line, this runs through Alhambra, San Gabriel and connects with the Metrolink and the Silver Line extension here in El Monte and also in Baldwin Park again. Or no, the uh, the Silver Line connects with the uh, San Bernardino line in Baldwin Park, and then again in Claremont, Montclair, Pomona. But to the west, I have the Silver Line. All right, so this is uh, where I get a little bit more ambitious here. And um, so there are a few options for west, but I say here's what we do. I say death to the 101 freeway, and I am fully prepared to go to go to battle to to defend. Um, this idea um, and I will make other videos to um, explain why I think this makes sense but uh, just a, another quick um, history aside here um, so you may have looked at a digital map or a road map or an atlas or something at some point and wondered why does Boyle Heights look like this why why is there this island of nice neighborhoods surrounded by freeway why would they why who would allow freeways to completely encircle a neighborhood like this especially like down here where it's like i mean come on down in south boyle avenue and fifth street around here where it's like the, <laughs> there's barely a block between the two freeways um so when i when i talk about environmental racism this is what i'm talking about so back in the um 19 1940s back when california and the united states were just going completely crazy building freeways um so about in like 1947 um, after uh, having built the Arroyo Seco uh, Pike Parkway, which everyone seemed to love because it kind of, you know, winded through the land, had had it had this this cool tunnel, the engineering was neat. Nobody really seemed to hate the Arroyo Seco that much just because it's so fun to drive on. Um, that they were just going crazy. They're like, oh yeah, we got to build the freeway to Hollywood too now. So what they did is they they didn't have the like environmental review process that they have today. They didn't have any of the public comment periods or any of the um, opportunities to have hearings or anything they have now. They just bulldozed through these neighborhoods because these were politically disempowered minority neighborhoods then, as many of them are to this day, unfortunately. Um, less so, I, I like to think, but it's still a, these are not problems that exist only in the past. But anyway, 
Um, so the 101 freeway just devastated Boyle Heights. And I mean, Boyle Heights has maintained its identity and this isolation from the environmental racism that was the construction of the freeways really actually kind of gave Boyle Heights kind of the identity that is so well known today in Los Angeles and the kind of spirit of activism. But that, that, that comes from this tragically unsuccessful effort to stop the 101 freeway from being built through Boyle Heights like this. And Boyle Heights should have access to the LA River, but it doesn't because of this. So what I say is, and now this actually plays, this kind of factors into one of these um, rail lines that we're talking about on how to revive the Pacific Electric. Because the 101 freeway, it also, not only did it uh, just devastate uh, the neighborhood of Boyle Heights, um, mostly bec just because it could, and because the people in Boyle Heights didn't have enough enough money or enough votes to, to get it to make it stop to stop it back in the 1940s and they just plat the, the highway building authority just plowed through and I view that as kind of a, a crime against humanity because the in, the pollution that, that's caused by that continues to this day so it's not like that's a wound that 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 exists only in the 1940s and 50s and people who can remember it are, are still upset um, but anybody who's you know who, who was born more recently probably doesn't think about it but no, this is different than that. This is an ongoing issue because of the amount of pollution. It's these both of these freeways. So after the 101 was freeway was built through Boyle Heights, the 5 freeway was also crammed through here. And now the 5 freeway would be a lot more, would be very difficult to get rid of. Um, the constituency for it is very rich and very broad because it includes the trucking industry and stuff. But the 101 freeway is kind of this orphan freeway right here. And it does not have as powerful a constituency as the entire 5 freeway, which runs through the entire state, does. The, the 101 freeway from the 170 to the 5 here, this was built in 1947, and it's effectively obsolete. It's congested, almost it's, it's almost non-moving, like 24 hours a day. And it's just completely obsolete in every sense. And it, it just dumps cars onto the streets of LA. It just, there's no positive effect of this existing. Like everything, everything that has happened because this, this freeway has been built has been bad. Nothing good has happened because this freeway was built. Because you see these right here? These are just funnels that just unload cars onto these onto these Los Angeles city streets. And that's why there's no parking in Los Angeles. That's why, there's always there's uh, that's why it's so unsafe to be a pedestrian or a bicyclist in Los Angeles it's because these freeways just dump cars onto the normal city street grid, and it's it's because we uh, allowed them to be built before we had the environmental laws we do. So what we do is we get rid of the 101 freeway through Boyle Heights. We just demolish it, turn it into a park, which would be my preference, or we could just run a train right down the middle of it if it, uh, that becomes if that is politically impossible to do. Um, I think I think it could be done. Uh, it's been done before in California. It's being done right now in Long Beach. They're taking a freeway out of Terminal Island. They're taking out the Terminal Island Freeway. This little useless stub right here so West Long Beach can have uh, real parks. I think we should do that with the 101 Freeway, turn it into a park. I think that's. Uh, I think it, that would be a lot cheaper than the, just building a cap over it. And because its presence actually makes traffic in Los Angeles worse and not better, removing it would make traffic in Los Angeles better and not worse. So it's counterintuitive, but removing freeways makes traffic less congested, period. So we have the Silver Line ideally as um, just just a rail line, and we turn the 101 into a park. But if we can't do that, it's just like the it's just like the 105, where it's just running down the middle of the 101 to Santa Monica Boulevard here, where it would continue along the historic Pacific Electric route, similarly to on Washington Boulevard. Although I would insist on there being more pedestrian improvements uh, constructed in conjunction with it. Um, and just uh, have there be, uh, turn, maybe turn Santa Monica Boulevard into a, a great street, if you will, um, just so it's, it can have those nice scramble crosswalks that are safe to walk on um, instead of having to, you know, run out in front of traffic. But anyways, yeah, so we just get rid of the 101 freeway. Instead of spending millions of dollars on this whole Park 101 thing, we just turn the 101 freeway into a park as it is, and we just get rid of the pavement, no more freeway, get rid of it. Save millions of dollars building um, big platforms out over the freeway. Um, it would be better for the environment just to not have the freeway at all. I say we do that. Um, but yeah, either way, we have the Silver Line continuing as rail up to up to Santa Monica Boulevard, and then I say Jay, just have it continue down here, and then uh, share tracks with the uh, ex what's already going to be built through West Hollywood as part of the um, Crenshaw LAX Northern Line, 
and just have that continue down the historic Pacific Electric route that is actually intact uh, down Santa Monica Boulevard, which I will show you right here. So you can see this is this is intact. It's just waiting for a rail line to be rebuilt on this corridor. Um, and this would be this is a cheaper way to do the uh, sub um, another rail line to Santa Monica. Um, so I'll show you how this would get to Santa Monica in my imagination. Now I'll, I'll do another map um, focusing on the coastal area. Uh, if this idea gets enough traction and if we if we end up actually wanting to get it on the measure But essentially what we do is we just have the rail line continue down as just light rail down Santa Monica Boulevard But we have it go underground somewhere here, and then we just have it resume instead of um, uh, building the expensive purple line extension to uh, down Wilshire which um, would be several billion dollars for um, I Mean it's been ruled out. I don't know. We should maybe do it at some point. I'm not I'm not ruling it out entirely um, but for a cheaper alternative way to get rail uh, uh, for that corridor would be to just have a short underground light rail thing under the VA here and then just have um, a light rail that uh, have the uh, Santa Monica Boulevard line, the silver line, which has been converted to rail and um, it's the same silver line but as the silver line busway but it's been converted to rail and it goes all the way to San Bernardino on the and meets with the blue line near Pomona now and um, that, that would continue along the old Pacific Electric route down San Vicente and um, it would just uh, meet with Ocean Ocean Avenue right now. And, and, and some people might say, oh, well, there will be political issues getting a rail line down Ocean Avenue. Here's what I say to that. Maybe uh, that's not on, that, that, that there might be uh, some of these billionaire hotel owners might, um, <laughs> might, might have, raise a little bit of a stink about having a rail line above ground down Ocean. And uh, the answer to that would be, of course, a, we could bury the rail line for this portion if they made enough of a stink, or B, um, you could just kind of say no, because right now uh, Ocean Avenue is a road for cars. It's not a pedestrian mall like the lovely Third Street Promenade, which we all love so much. Um, it is a regular car street, so maybe you could just turn this into a, um, just a, maybe you could just ban cars from Ocean Avenue, wouldn't that be nice? And then only have the rail line here, just have it meet with Colorado Avenue, and I guess maybe have it turn on, you could turn on, in theory, you could turn on to Colorado and meet with the Expo, or they could figure out some other configuration, but that's just one idea um, of how to get rail to this, uh, this, this area of um, Santa Monica for less money than the, the subway to the sea. So that's just something to think about. Okay, we've got a lot of rail lines to get to, but um, I'm going to show the rest of the ones that are already funded. Um, so the silver line's not funded already. That's that's um, something I think we should get on the ballot. But um, the uh, Sepulveda Pass line, this is funded. This is going to hit UCLA. It's going to go up to Van Nuys, and it's going to join um, the current um, Antelope Valley right of way. And we've uh, talked about this in a previous video of mine in the um, Cal in uh, the um, how will high-speed rail affect Metrolink video, but this is going to possibly go as far as Via Princesa um, uh, following the Antelope Valley right-of-way. But um, the Antelope Valley line would continue, I think, but it would uh, it's likely it would use the new high-speed rail tracks through the mountains. And this, that's that uh, Sepulveda Pass line. Now, what else is already funded here? So this is uh, the purple line, of course. We got our purple line extension here, and then that would um, that's going to meet the uh, Sepulveda Pass line here. And this would just be another junction of the purple line, just making the purple line more effective, more usable for more people. Uh, I would also have another junction with the uh, Sepulveda Pass line here. And uh, before we get into um, the lines that I'm um, proposing for the ballot initiative, we're also going to put on the orange here. So that's the orange line that's going to be converted to rail and also um, this is the North Hollywood uh, BRT thing that's also eventually going to be rail. Um, we could accelerate the option to turn this into rail and make it just part of it, make the orange line one big rail line from uh, Pasadena to Chatsworth. Um, I think that would be awesome. This is my pre personal preferred route, but um, uh, there are a number of different routes being studied for this right now, so don't um, assume that this is 100% going to be the route that it'll take, but this is my preferred route personally, just because I think Travel Town deserves a, a rail station, but that's, um, full disclosure, that is my bias on this one, so I'm not sure that that's necessarily the um, most popular, or the most locally preferred route, um, but this is the fastest route, and it's the one that would serve Travel Town, so that's why <laughs> I'm showing that one, but I just wanted to disclose that was why I was showing it as, as such, instead of one of the other alternatives. Now, of course, we've got the Disney, the Disney LAX line I talked about. And we've got, uh, from the last video, the lines to San Pedro and to um, Long, Long Beach f uh, following part of the Santa Ana branch. We did, this is uh, something we talked about in um, a previous video, I believe. 
Yeah, so in, in, in my last video, uh, we, we these lines you can see here, these are, um, one goes to down Cherry Avenue, follows the, this old uh, railroad right of way past Lakewood and Long Beach Airport. Uh, that's what we talked about in the last video. Uh, and uh, these lines, so I have the, I have these shown going north to um, now. Of course, um, what what lines these would specifically connect to would be up to, for debate. I don't want everybody to focus on like the specific um, colors that I've chosen for the routes or the specific um, liberties that I've taken in terms of like which routes connect um, to which other routes on the north uh, and the south, and just focus instead on which areas are being served and which specific routes um, are being used in your feedback. That's what's most useful to me. But anyway, so this San Pedro line here I have shown, um, just heading up Soto Street here, I think. I think that's Soto Street. Yeah, so that's uh, I have that up uh, going up Soto Street there. Um, as just regular light rail, it could go underground. Um, that would, of course, um, be up for debate. Um, anything could go up underground anywhere, or, or it could go as an elevated line anywhere. Like these are all; those are all things that will get figured out in the um, legally required environmental impact and uh, alternatives analysis process. Um, that is required by law, so you don't necessarily have to bring all that stuff up right now. Um, we should focus more on which which routes we should use, which areas should be served. Uh, that's what's most useful to me in actually trying to get this this stuff um, on the ballot. But um, okay, so yeah, so this goes north through Soto Street here, and then rejoins the historic Pacific Electric route on Huntington Drive. Um, I think um, it's it would be very sensible just to um, have another line going through the San Gabriel Valley here, just because this area is very densely populated. It's every bit as densely populated. It's probably more densely populated than this area up here, and. Um, it is that these neighborhoods grew up around a Pacific Electric Rail line that's not there anymore. So all of the housing stock in that area, all of the built buildings that are built around there are effectively designed to be next to a rail line. Like it's it's the LA was designed to be a city of little centers connected by rail. And um, here's like one of those, you know, South Pasadena would be one of those little centers, even though that's a separate city, of course, but. You get what I'm talking about. Like the um, the city is designed to be connected by rail, and uh, we should reconnect it by rail um, by the historic routes that it used to be connected by, because that's just how the city is designed to be, and it just makes our city function better when it's connected the way it's supposed to be connected. So we just rebuild the rail line down Huntington Drive like this, and that I, I guess I, I have that shown um, going all the way to San Pedro. That's just a liberty I took. This could maybe you, maybe you could make this the line that goes to Long Beach, but that would all be up for debate, of course. Um, I don't. I don't get it. Nobody gets to decide any of this stuff unilaterally. And that's what the beauty of it. Um, what's great about California is that the people really do get to decide what gets built and what doesn't. So um, no one person gets to prescribe exactly what should be built. And now, of course, I should show on here um, the red line, of course, I believe should be extended all the way to San Pedro, as I talked about in the previous video. And um, now I think there should be a line up to uh, Sunland, Tijunca, La Crescenta, Montrose, La Cañada, Flint Ridge, all that, that area. Um, all those towns whose names I don't say frequently enough to pronounce correctly, but I do, I do have you all in mind. Um, and I do think you deserve ra rail. Um, and I think the most sensible route for rail um, for, these, for, these, for these cities would be um, probably just uh, straight up the 210 freeway and then I'll uh, exit the 210 freeway because Freeway rail stops are not very walkable, so they, they, they should they should kind of not e exist exclusively on the freeway. It should go on Foothill Boulevard just through through here, and it should just be it just it should just join the Antelope Valley line kind of in uh, symmetry with the Van Nuys Boulevard's Pulvera Pass LAX line here, uh, UCLA line thing, and um, maybe just share and then just use the existing route route that will already be probably funded and built as part of the. Um, Sepulveda Pass line up to uh, Santa Clarita or even Via Princesa here. So that just reflects existing travel patterns and transit corridors, etc. And then I guess you could just use the, since it would be connecting to the stuff that's already being built, and just why not have it go all the way to San Bernardino? I mean, if it's if it's if the track's being built already, there's no reason not to just alternate. You know, have one train be going here, the next train be going there, and have the next train be going to a third place, so you can have trains actually arriving more frequently to more a more diverse set of destinations. All right, now uh, let's talk about the Glendale Burbank uh, streetcar. Yeah, so one thing I have been, I have been, uh, I've had my eye on is this um, 
the Southern California Associated Governments um, funded an $100,000 study of a uh, rail line that would connect. The, this is going to be the high speed rail station right here in um, the future Burbank Airport high speed rail station at Hollywood Way and whatever this cross street is right here. Um, I'll show you on this map exactly where that's going to be. Yeah, so. Um, the uh, Burbank Airport's uh, rail station, uh, the main rail station is going to be at uh, North Hollywood Way and San Fernando Boulevard right here. And uh, they're going to move a bunch of the terminal stuff to this area here. And uh, yeah, high-speed rail is going to come right down uh, San Fernando Road along the, uh, the uh, Metrolink route um, after, after it comes down from, the, um, from its big tunnel that's going to build up here. And... Um, so uh, they wanted to, uh, the Southern California Associated Governments, not to be confused with the South Coast Air Quality Management District, which is the special purpose district we're going to actually hold this election in, or this um, have this ballot measure in. The uh, Southern California Associated Governments wanted uh, this high-speed rail station to be connected to Burbank and Glendale, where, um, which is uh, abs absolutely it should be. Um, and the old Pacific Electric route through Glendale and Burbank was, um, it went, goes down uh, Glen Oaks uh, through Burbank, and then in Glendale, it switches to Brand. Now, uh, the other routes had been had been used historically by the Pacific Electric. I believe there was a Glendale Avenue route at one point as well. But the uh, arterial route and the route that um, was used at the time of abandonment, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, uh, Brand Boulevard to Glen Oaks Boulevard. And um, so, yeah, we just have this go up here and connect to high-speed rail. But instead of making this a low-floor boarding streetcar and having it meet with a downtown LA streetcar, after, um, I, I, I did, that was my original idea, and um, I'd been, I'd been kind of sitting on this one for a while. Uh, I did, I have an op-ed here where, like, I was like, well, maybe we should connect the downtown LA streetcar. And um, I still think that would be um, one possible good option for uh, how to actually make our streetcar, downtown LA streetcars, um, or just how maybe just how uh, the city of Los Angeles could actually contribute to this effort instead of having it be all uh, the county and sales tax money actually have maybe some LA property taxes going into this kind of infrastructure. But um, I guess um, it's more important that it gets done than it gets done a specific way. So um, maybe it's, we maybe just turn the Glendale Burbank streetcar project into a metro rail line with this ballot measure and just say, forget about, why have two different systems? Um, still do the downtown LA streetcar because that's already funded, that's already happening. Um, they, we, uh, Councilman Huizar clearly really wants that, the business community wants that, so that's that's gonna happen. But let's just say, um, let's just use the old Pacific Electric route here that is still intact um, to, to Glendale and just rebuild the old bridge um, that there are still buttresses for in the river. Um, of course, there would have to be, uh, in order to use this old Pacific Electric route, I have been here, I've um, taken a number of, I've documented, I've taken a lot of photos and documented the old right-of-way. Um, let's get oriented here. Um, yeah, so this is the old PE route, uh, the old Pacific Electric route through uh, Silver Lake. See, the road known as Silver Lake Circuit, that was is supposed to be a rail line. Um, that is supposed to be a rail line right there. And uh, originally there used to be, as you could see from this photograph here, so this is the old uh, I think the Fletcher overcrossing here, Fletcher Viaduct, and um, that crossed over like right here. Yeah, the Fletcher overcrossing uh, that crossed over like right by um, Fletcher and Riverside. There used to be a bridge here, so we just have to rebuild that bridge. Some, uh, uh, some probably kind of expensive engineering work would have to be done to figure out exactly how to connect. Uh, how to rebuild this part of the right of way here, but it's doable. Um, I'm I'm confident California has the civil engineers that 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 are talented enough that they could figure that out without breaking a sweat. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that this is the old Pacific Electric Bridge, and then it would just um, as a metro rail line instead of just a little streetcar. I, I say just have it. Um, uh, you see, this part of the PE right away has been obliterated for this housing, so just have it go on to uh, either as like an um, elevated thing over the five freeway maybe. Man, this, this area is so... Five Freeway trashed everything. It, it always makes me so mad just looking at it. But um, yeah, just have the uh, Pacific Electric line just go over the Five Freeway like this. And um, and then just rebuild this specific bridge right here. Yeah, so that would just be a new Metro Rail line. And that would just go down and connect to the Cherry Avenue uh, Long Beach Airport line that we have right here. I, I am planning to make videos for each one of these lines individually if they do make it to the ballot measure. So expect lots more to come on that, and um, of course do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and support me on Patreon if you can, because this, this does take a lot of time to do. Alright, so 
Another line we have is there should be a Santa Monica Long Beach line along the uh, the old Pacific Electric route for the uh, what is now the Expo line. So now we're going to talk about the Expo line real and the Blue line real quick. So when the Expo line was originally built to Culver City, which I believe opened in 2012 or so, they didn't use the original Pacific Electric route, which actually went straight through stuff uh, or what, what is this is my neighborhood. Um, nobody can seem to agree on what my neighborhood is called. Some people call it historic South Central. Um, I, I just call it the area by trade tech because that's where I go to school. But like the official city neighborhood council thing calls it historic South Central. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this old rail line goes right through here. This is the old Santa Monica Air Line from when that was a Pacific Electric slash Southern Pacific route. For those of you that aren't familiar with the history already, um, Southern Pacific and Pacific Electric are not the same thing, but they might as well be for our intents and purposes. So like, th it's just, it's kind of like Southern Pacific and Union Pacific. Like one, they were distinct at one point and other points they weren't. So to us at this point, it doesn't matter that much. Um, we, we can think of them as kind of the same thing. But uh, anyway, yeah. So what we have here is this is the, this route is intact here. And this is what, this just goes straight through my neighborhood. I would say probably maybe some, um, uh, grade separations might be a good idea just for this beginning stretch, uh, or at least for this intersection of uh, Maine and Jefferson right here might be a good idea to grade separate that because that's a busy bus corridor. But then, um, yeah, just follow the old airline route, and then we just have a, just create uh, give birth to this new line right here, this um, Long Beach Santa Monica line. Um, just using this historic route. The only part that would have to be built would be this little str stretch right here through my neighborhood. Um, and that's intact. It could be rebuilt pretty easily. Probably maybe um, one cut and cover grade separation would do the trick for um, getting the community support it needs for uh, for that, just knowing this neighborhood. And yeah, that, that could get done pretty easily. And um, so I had a line I showed on, on a, a previous blog post of mine. You'll notice that this one says revised. And uh, the reason it's revised is because I actually, I, I took in a ton of feedback. So not only did I research this for like two years, I also, um, I wanted to put all of these ideas that I, these are not all my ideas. Actually, most of these are other people's ideas. I've just put them all in the same place. I just happened to be the first person that has taken all of these good ideas that other people have had, added a few of my own ideas, and just kind of put them all in the same place, and um, taken the time to justify why it should be, it should look like this. But in the previous blog post, you'll see that uh, there is this um, pink line here that I had going from the Griffith Observatory to Venice. And after getting feedback from uh, you good people on Facebook and also, of course, my patrons on Patreon, I have revised that line to something that makes more sense and is more uh, representative of actual travel patterns as well as uh, the historic resources that are available to us for uh, re actually rebuilding. So what I wound up is I actually wound up turning that into two lines in accordance with suggestions that I got on Facebook. Um, and. Um, I mean, I don't just draw anything that anyone suggests to me on Facebook, but when someone makes a comment and it's like, everything on the internet is real. So like, I am a real person and if you have a really good suggestion and I read it and it's like a better idea than the one I had, I'm gonna use your idea instead because it's a better idea. And this is about LA, be, or this is about rebuilding Los Angeles into the transportation paradise that it was meant to be. and getting and defeating traffic. This is not about who's right and who's wrong. This is about making this the best city it can possibly be. Because LA minus cars is the perfect city. It's the best city on the entire planet. I don't care what anyone says. LA minus cars is the best city in the world. But we have too many cars and it is and they, they have devastated our city. But um, we're gonna fix that and this is how. So what I have here is someone said that um, the Washington Boulevard deserves more love, and I could not possibly agree with that sentiment more, as I happen to live right by Washington Boulevard, and oh my goodness, this street could use so much love. I am, um, actually, um, I, I don't drive anymore, I sold my car, I just didn't want to deal with parking anymore, and um, I, I actually have to walk down Washington Boulevard all the time, and this is a dangerous street. Um, it's not dangerous because of the people, uh, you're not likely to be bothered anymore anywhere anymore than you are anywhere else in the city but um what, what, what is likely to happen to you on Washington is you are likely to be killed by a car a car that's going very fast and um, the reason for that is because 
Washington Boulevard was um, reconfigured along, I think, with uh, the construction of the Blue Line. And uh, that was in 1990, and they really just didn't take pedestrian safely seriously back then. And I think what they, um, if I had to guess, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm, based on what I, I see every day, just walking down Washington Boulevard, and this is kind of how the street's set up, I think they actually shrunk the sidewalks. I think the, re the sidewalks on Washington are thinner than they're supposed to be, because I think they, wa they, they shrunk them in order to fit the rail line down it. And um, because it was 1990, instead of taking space from cars like they should have and making the sidewalks um, safe for pedestrians, cyclists, and the disabled, they t they took space away from the human people that needed it and gave it to uh, the ca gave it to cars essentially. So. Um, we need to fix up Washington Boulevard, and this would be a great opportunity to do it. Uh, we need wider sidewalks, and we need scramble crosswalks on Washington Boulevard. We need to take one car lane from each side of Washington Boulevard and turn it into a protected bike lane, not just a painted bike lane, but a protected bike lane that is grade separated from traffic. And this would be a great chance to do that because um, I uh, so Washington Boulevard is the dividing line between the ninth city council district, which is um, council member uh, Price's uh, council district, and then Jose Huizar's council district. And uh, Jose Huizar's doing the streetcar. He's downtown LA, and it just seems that neither of them, because it's the dividing line, it seems like neither of them are really willing to take ownership of Washington Boulevard and actually make the streetscape improvements that we need in our neighborhood. And um, so I think, shoot. If, if they're not going to do it for us, let's do it for ourselves and let's um, in, get uh, some improvements on uh, Washington Boulevard done as part of a rail line. Uh, let's just extend. So somebody, uh, this isn't, this wasn't actually even an original idea. Someone suggested this to me on Facebook. They were like, the Washington Boulevard, Washington Boulevard needs more connectivity, essentially, to the east and west. Somebody said, and uh, other people also also told me at other times. So I think the um, what we do here is we just have a Washington Boulevard line that just meets with this extension of the gold line to Whittier. And uh, so only this portion would have to be built in addition to the blue and, and gold lines that are already funded and or constructed. The blue line already exists. This part exists already. So just this part past Long Beach Avenue uh, to uh, this area around Commerce would have to be constructed anew. And then this portion would have to be constructed anew down Washington to the west. I think this this whole neighborhood around here needs a better east-west transit connection, especially the area around Pico and Venice here. This would be a great opportunity to do that, and I say, yeah, just have the, so you end up just having a Venice to uh, Inland Empire line, essentially, that just runs down Venice Boulevard to Washington Boulevard, and, and then it joins the gold line, which I envision eventually being extended to the Inland Empire as part of this 2020 um, ballot initiative. Now that, that's almost everything. I've just got a few more lines I got to show you before I finish this video up and I get back to making more scripted, less um, <laughs> less long videos than this one. Um, I do want to make kind of like a flyover video similar to the Vermont Avenue subway video or the Orange County Metro Rail extension video or the Met, my original Metrolink video for all of these lines over the next couple of years. And uh, if they can actually make it into the ballot measure, I actually will do that. So like and subscribe, please do stay tuned. And then uh, finally, just before we go, I re-envisioned this Griffith Park kind of Western Avenue line as a, instead of connecting to the old Venice short line down here, so as you can see, the speaking of uh, Pacific Electric route resources that are still intact, in addition to the um, Pacific Electric line down San Vicente, also still intact, on the west side is the Venice Short Line, with the exception of one structure that has been built on the right of way, the Venice Library, which would have to, I guess they'd have to use a new, uh, they'd have to find a new structure to move the library into to rebuild it. But I say that would be worth it because it's not, the library is not, it's not a historic library, it's just a library. So like I said, with the Veterans Park in Redondo Beach in the last video, it's not fair to take a resource like a park or a, a library out of a neighborhood, but it is fair to trade as long as the trade is f a fair trade. So I would say just find a new structure to use for the Venice Library that's in the, that's within walking distance of the old one, that's the same size and stuff, and just bring back the Venice Short Line, and then just connect that to the Washington Boulevard Line, so you'd have a Venice to Inland Empire Line, and then you'd have the Santa Monica to Inland Empire Line. So you'd have just like this incredible, un unprecedented connectivity that would be actually even better than what we had with the Pacific Electric. And finally, we'd also use this, this old line is intact. This is, uh, you'll actually see signs that say Metro. If you, if you go to this part of Culver Boulevard here, so you can see, you might have noticed this kind of trail next to Culver Boulevard, that's Pacific Electric too. Whenever you see like a continuous straight line like that in LA, you, 
there's a pretty pretty good chance it used to be a rail line. And in the case of this one, Metro actually has signs posted saying that this is uh, uh, Metro right of way because they actually I think they acquired it or they have, they already owned it, and this was actually considered as an alternate route for the Expo line. Fortunately, the NIMBYs in Cheviot Hills actually lost that battle, and the uh, they were allowed to use the original rail route instead of having to detour down Culver Boulevard at Culver City. But yeah, so that is official Metro-owned right-of-way, and we would just restore that and then have a line to Playa del Rey just ending here. This is all just in mostly industrial here, so there's no sense getting it any further south than that for now, especially if we have a, a Beach Cities line using this old Santa Fe line here. And um, I think, unless I'm forgetting anything here, let me just uh, go through my layers just to make sure that I'm not uh, forgetting anybody. Oh yeah, yeah, and I forgot to, well, one last thing is, um, of course, this is a big one. This would be an expensive one, but it would be worth it. I knew there was at least one thing I was forgetting about there. The red line, in addition to being extended south to San Pedro, because it's going to be separated from the purple line, when, or it's most likely going to be separated from the purple line, and the purple line is just going to be like this arts district to West, West LA line, and the red line is going to be this San Fernando Valley to San Pedro line, I would say it would make the most sense to just finish the job with the red line and just curve it up here and then have it hit both of these, this existing rail station and this planned rail station. People are gonna be flying into Burbank Airport, people are gonna be taking the high-speed train to Burbank Airport, and if they can connect to the subway here, that's gonna be a really useful station, and it will really, really help connect this corridor to high-speed rail as well as the east-west. And one final thing, just because I did want to get to everybody's ideas, or at least all the ones that I had a conversation with, with people about, uh, one that I don't think makes sense yet, but I think will in the future, is uh, somebody was like, well, maybe we should keep going um, after we get the Arts District station funded, which it isn't funded yet, but I, um, I bet we could get some funding for that with this next transit funding ballot initiative in 2020. If we're going to be building all this with it, we might as well fund the Arts District station, which is very, it's very clear that a lot of people want that, and there's a ton of political interest in that happening. But uh, someone was like, well, why don't we continue it down and finish the downtown loop to Washington and Long Beach Boulevard. And the reason I haven't I haven't done that yet, I want to necessarily touch that with this ballot initiative yet, is because of Vernon. And this is the last thing we're going to touch on before we move on to part three, where we talk about the Inland Empire and the exciting new Redlands Rail project in the next video, which is going to have uh, San Bernardino is going to have its own it's going to have its own train system, and it's wonderful. And I say good for them. And we're we're going to talk more about that, but we're also going to talk about how best to connect that to Metro Rail. But for for right now, um, the reason I I don't think that the Arts District Station, or well, I think the Arts District Station should absolutely be built. So that's the one that's down here. So Metro's rail yard is down here. And what, what's going on is this yard's going to be expanded because the purple line is going to get a lot busier when the, when it gets extended. So many people are going to use the purple line. But this neighborhood, the Arts District, Little Tokyo, this whole area here, wants another metro rail station. And they, they should have one because it's densely populated. It's a growing neighborhood. And the uh, I think it would probably be at like 6th and Santa Fe, like somewhere around here, just in this area. And um, I mean, that would be really cool because even though you see a bridge here right now, there actually isn't a bridge here right now. This is gonna be the future 6th Street Viaduct. Um, and uh, this bridge has been demolished because this was built with defective concrete. And this is the iconic 6th Street Viaduct. It's still here on Google Earth, or on uh, Apple Maps, I mean. But it is not here in real life anymore. And a uh, new bridge is being rebuilt and it's gonna be a really cool looking bridge and there's also, there might as well be a, a gateway to the subway right here too, might as well be a subway. But somebody was like, well, why don't we keep going? Why don't we extend it and have it meet with the blue line here? And the reason I'm not touching that one yet is because of this, because of the city of Vernon. Vernon is a hot bag of potatoes that I am not going anywhere near right now because I wouldn't even be willing to bet money that Vernon will still be an incorporated city 20 years from now. So um, they're being so, uh, the Vernon is just known for, it, Vernon's that, that, that city um, that is only industrial. There's like 150 people that live here. And the, um, the less well-written second season of True Detective is actually based on all the corruption in the city of Vernon that is um, very well known in political circles in California. And actually, the state legislator has been trying to disincorporate Vernon because um, for a number of reasons. They're disastrous, catastrophic pollution. Um, you see the LA River goes right through Vernon and um, this is this is near where the Exide battery plant was where 
and um, so many children have asthma and unnecessary disease as a result of the industry in Vernon that that, that just that that city is politically untenable in the foreseeable future. I I don't. Vernon may survive. Vernon may turn into a normal gateway city. Um, they have been trying to build some housing there, but. The politics of Vernon are weird. They're really weird. I don't understand them, and I'm not touching that yet. Until I better understand Vernon, until I, I can be convinced that Vernon's still gonna be <laughs> still, still gonna be a city, and we know what the land use is gonna look like. There are just too many. Just like with Seal Beach, where I said that um, for now it would make the most sense, at least just for now to uh, revive the East Long Beach Pacific Electric Line only as far as here, just because there are so many unknowns um, in terms of what would be best for Seal Beach and what the residents of Seal Beach would prefer. The same same is equally true for in, uh, very different reasons, but uh, also warranting some reservation uh, with Vernon. I just, we gotta, we gotta I, further study is needed. That's I'll leave it at that. Before we figure out whether or not we should bring the purple line deeper into Vernon because we want to make sure that land is being used in a way that is equitable. We want to make sure that the land, the very valuable land that Vernon is, is actually benefiting the greater population of working people in the Los Angeles region. And until it's clear that the city of Vernon is actually working in furtherance of that, like we don't know who's gonna get rich off this like they're just a lot of unanswered questions and i would say let's wait on that so all right so thanks so much for tuning in to this long-winded diatribe where i try and I, I hope i hope you better understand this map that i that i have constructed i put several years of research into this and a lot of your suggestions into this and i, I look forward to all your additional feedback and uh please do um support me on patreon los angeles is made possible only from the support of my patrons on patreon because believe it or not um youtube is actually cutting off ad revenue to anybody with less than a thousand subscribers at the end of february so if you want if you want if you want me not to starve um please subscribe get me closer to a thousand or support me on patreon if you can um thank you so much